People might remember that uh, I quite like the old Infocom text adventures. I even went so far as to write an interpreter for one of these LiveScribe pens, which uh, then I got permission from Activision to release um, a version of Zork uh, onto the LiveScribe app store, which uh, sadly no longer exists. This is my new Z Machine project. Uh, Z Machine is the virtual machine on which uh, the Infocom text adventures run on. And at first it may not seem that interesting. Uh, I guess the interesting bit is here, because this is uh, an FPGA board. It's just one of these cheap development boards. You can get them off uh, eBay. Uh, they're very reasonable. I think this was maybe £8. Um, and the great thing about FPGAs is that uh, they basically allow you to create uh, digital electronic devices, you know, sort of design your own chips. And being uh, a fan of the Infocom text ventures, which are one of the first, uh, at least on a home computer, uh, the first types of programs that would use a virtual machine. So this was they basically designed a CPU that didn't exist and then they wrote their games for that CPU and then uh, for every home console or home computer that was around at the time which there are a lot of and they're all incompatible with each other they wrote interpreters for them which meant that they could all run the same code, the code that was meant for the Z machine. So the interesting thing about this is that this isn't another processor running Z code. This is a Z code processor. So its instruction set is the same as the Z machine. And so it runs Infocom text ventures natively. And it's quite a simple board. So down here we have this FPGA module, which uh, contains my design for the Z machine CPU. Down here we have 258k of RAM, it's SRAM, 8 bits, um, and then under here this is a 512k uh, flash memory, it's also 8 bit. Uh, this is an Arduino shield, um, it's a capacitive uh, resistive touch display. Uh, these are incredibly cheap. I think this was two pounds something. Uh, so if you need a display for anything, why wouldn't you use one of these? And then finally, because uh, this is a resistive touch display, um, I also have to have a analog to digital converter so that I can actually read where the input's coming from. So that's basically the overview of the board. Let's have a closer look at it running some games. Here it is running Zork, um, and so you interact obviously with the on-screen keyboards. Um, not maybe the absolute best uh, input method for this, um, but made sense. I had a resistive, resistive touchscreen, uh, made sense to actually use it. Um, so you just do a couple of like easy moves. Uh, let's open the mailbox and then read the leaflet that's inside. There you go. Uh, and then obviously like, go west. We'll take you to the forest. Um, because this is a resistive touchscreen, I thought, well, might as well use some sort of modern uh, interface design. So you can scroll back and forth through the history uh, of you know what, what you've been doing. There's about two screens worth uh, that you can scroll back through just in case there's, there's a lot of text. Um, also, when I showed earlier the flash chip, I said that it was 512K. Well, most of the games back in the day uh, would only take up 120K because that's how big the uh, disk could hold. And, uh, so with 512k, well, you might as well uh, put four games on it. Uh, so on this one, you got Zork 1 loaded up. 
got Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which you know is very popular, uh, co-written by Douglas Adams, who is the original author. Uh, we've got Modern Game, Curses, uh, by Graham Nelson, who wrote the spec. Um, a very, very impressive guy, wrote uh, Inform as well, which is a language for writing text adventures. Uh, it's probably one of the things that got me in, into programming in the first place. And then Planetfall, uh, which is one of my favourites of the Infocom adventures. Uh, you know, maybe slightly, slightly more sophisticated than Zork. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this one. Uh, it's got a great uh, non-playable character called Floyd. Uh, it's a really good game. I'd, I'd really uh, recommend it. Um, so, obviously I had this machine, it was running these games, and I thought, well, I had a few K left, because I said each game only takes 120 K. There is a BIOS um, in there, which uh, takes up some space, but I still had maybe 4K or so left. Um, so I decided to put in some uh, Easter eggs. So one of them is a Mandelbrot generator, um, which is like a recursive algorithm. You used to see these sort of demos you know, all the time uh, back in the early days of uh, home computing. And well, that was okay. I thought it's not too exciting. Uh, so I thought maybe I uh, could also play some arcade games. So here's another Easter egg that uh, I added into the boss. Uh, which is Space Invaders clone, uh, which is pretty pretty much complete. I would I'd say uh, it doesn't keep track of score. Um, it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't continue after the first first screen, but uh, most of the most of it is there. And also, um, like I kind of wrote it to show that the processor wasn't uh, particularly slow, and also. It could run things that weren't just text adventures because um, it's pretty. It is Turing complete, so uh, it could it could run you know pretty much pretty much anything that a normal CPU can. Um, and yeah, and in fact, uh, this ran too fast and it's been artificially slowed down. Um, To make it actually playable. Yes, there you go. And uh, yeah, I think that's 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 pretty much it. Um, like I've, this is the first time I've ever done anything with uh, FPGA. Um, I think if you're interested in them, then definitely go ahead and do stuff with them. Uh, very, I wrote this in very log. Um, it, it wasn't difficult. I've never done any. Um, sort of hardware design languages any and before but uh, I found it, it very easy and these these boards are so cheap um, that there's there's nothing stopping you really uh, so that's my video I hope you enjoyed it uh, sorry it was a bit long uh, and uh, I'll see you next time